How should human beings deal with the problem of global warming? NASA climate modelers Igor Aronoff and David Lind once proposed a bold plan in a paper in the Journal of Climate Change, which is to turn the vast Sahara Desert into a lush forest. This idea looks perfect on the surface, but in fact it has a big bug. First, let's set aside how much effort it took to turn the Sahara into a forest. It's just that the price when it becomes a forest is unbearable for human beings. So why not turn it into a forest? Isn't the more forests the better? What if we turned all the deserts on earth into forests? Okay, that and more is exactly what we are going to talk about today. Let's get started. As an important part of the Earth's ecosphere, deserts and forests always seem to be on opposite sides. Compared with the desolate desert, people always prefer the vibrant forest. According to the data, the land area of the world is about 162 million square kilometers. Among them, the desert area accounts for about 20% of the total land area, and it is still expanding at a super fast speed. Under the influence of human activities and climate change, many lands are facing the risk of desertification, and they can be regarded as potential deserts. As for the forest, the proportion of land area it occupies actually exceeds that of the desert. This is because the definition of forest in the world is significantly different from the forest in everyone's impression. According to the definition of the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, as long as the area exceeds 0.5 hectares, the trees are more than 5 meters long and the canopy covers more than 10% of the land, it will be regarded as a forest. Of course, these forests cannot be located on agricultural or urban land. In short, under this definition, forests cover about 9.4% of the world, and their area accounts for about 30% of the global land area, which is about 4.06 billion hectares. In fact, before the advent of the industrial age, forest coverage was even larger than it is now, even accounting for about 50% of the land area. However, under the deforestation of human beings, more and more forests have disappeared from the Earth's territory. Of course, thanks to the efforts of many countries to plant trees, the forest coverage rate in some areas has also increased significantly. For example, China's forest coverage rate has increased in recent years, and its status can be easily seen from the comparison data of Earth satellites. Since humans have the ability to make more forests appear, then, humans should also be able to transform deserts into forests. However, for the Earth's ecology and human beings, doing so is not a good thing. So, what happens if you turn all the deserts into forests? Many people think this way, mainly because of the ecological importance of forests to the planet today. Just like the conclusions given by the two American weather model experts, the increase in forest area means that their carbon absorption capacity will further increase, and this carbon absorption capacity can change the worsening trend of global warming. According to the above description of the Sahara Desert to Forest Plan, people need to plant fast-growing tree species such as eucalyptus in the desert, and by building seawater desalination plants along the coast. These new forests will absorb about 8 trillion tons of carbon every year, roughly equivalent to emissions from fossil fuels and deforestation. However, this approach only pays attention to the carbon absorption capacity of the forest, but ignores the oxygen production capacity of the forest. Some people may say, isn't the more oxygen the better? In fact, too much oxygen can sometimes be a disaster. At present, the oxygen content in the atmosphere is about 21%, which is considered a relatively normal value, and will produce subtle changes according to differences in altitude and region. For example, in the Tibetan area of China, oxygen is relatively thin, so when many people travel to Tibet, they must prepare oxygen inhalation equipment in advance. However, such oxygen changes will generally not affect people's normal life if adequate preparations are made. However, if all the deserts in the world are transformed into forests, it will not be that easy. The oxygen content in the atmosphere may increase sharply, 
and by that time, regardless of whether humans can adapt quickly, other organisms should soon become the new overlords of the earth. Why? This is mainly because the earth has experienced such an era. In the distant Carboniferous period, there were ancient forests on the earth of unimaginable scale, which were tall and lush. Their day-to-day -day photosynthesis increases the oxygen content in the atmosphere. Robert Bernard, a biologist at Yale University in the United States, published a research report on the oxygen content of the Earth's atmosphere during the Carboniferous period, pointing out that the oxygen concentration at that time was as high as about 35%, much higher than today's 21%. This oxygen content made the insects in the Carboniferous forest grow to a huge size, because these arthropods absorb oxygen through the tiny trachea all over the body, unlike mammals that rely on blood to absorb oxygen indirectly. In this way, the 1.5-meter-long millipede, the dragonfly with a wingspan of 1 meter, and the spider that looked as big as a car became the overlords on the earth at that time. Therefore, once we transform all deserts into forests, we will undoubtedly give these creatures a chance to repeat their glorious history. By that time, humans may not be able to defeat these guys who are as terrifying as the Zerg in science fiction. Also, in addition to causing some creatures to grow towards a metamorphosis, the proliferation of trees will also make fires happen more and more frequently. First of all, there are more and more forests, the raw material for fires. Secondly, the sufficient oxygen content in the atmosphere will allow a little spark to form a fire soon. In this case, most of the planet would be engulfed in flames. Due to the difficulty of fighting forest fires, there is little that can be done. In this case, a large amount of toxic gas produced during the combustion process will inevitably affect the global ecology. It can be seen that it is unrealistic to transform all deserts in the world into forests, and the price to be paid in this way is unbearable for human beings. So the best way is to keep the Earth's oxygen at the status quo. Some people are also worried that the oxygen on the Earth will disappear with the consumption of human beings, and it may be the end of the world by then. So, will the Earth's oxygen run out? For this problem, some scientists actually raised it very early. For example, in 1898, the British physicist Kelvin stated that under the situation of industrial development and population surge, the oxygen on the Earth may be exhausted in 500 years. But in fact, his statement is too exaggerated, because there are a large number of plants on the Earth that can perform photosynthesis and create oxygen for humans. In this case, it is impossible for human beings to face the situation of oxygen scarcity within hundreds of years. According to the Earth's climate change model established by Japanese scientist Kazumi Ozaki and American scientist Reinhold, the oxygen-enriched state of the Earth can still be maintained for at least one billion years. It can be seen from this that we don't have to worry about human civilization dying from lack of oxygen. Okay, that's all for today. Please put your comments below, and share your insightful ideas with other people. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. See you.